Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for today's Thursday with AARP Wisconsin. I am Amber Miller, your host for today, and also the Associate State Director of Community Outreach with AARP Wisconsin. Please note that this is a pre-recorded interview, but please feel free to still post your questions and we will get back to them. But before we get started with our guests today, just a friendly reminder that if you're looking for any information on upcoming events, which I will actually talk about towards the end of the show, please visit us at aarp.org backslash Wisconsin. And also remember to check out AARP Community Connections. This is an initiative that started earlier this year where you can find volunteer opportunities within your neighborhood to support your local community. And also check out the AARP Friendly Voice program, which can also be found below. This is where you can request a phone call from one of our trained volunteers on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis just to have a conversation with you and to see how things are going. You do not need to be an AARP member to take advantage of this program, and you can be any age. So this month is, uh, November is Caregivers, uh, Caregivers Month, and it's a time to recognize, support, and empower family caregivers. And also Governor Evers has signed a proclamation for this month. So today we are going to be talking to Helen Marks Dix with AARP Wisconsin. Hello, Helen, how are you? I'm fine, and how are you, Amber? Great, <laughs> um, always good to see you. We know that when we have you on the show, it's gonna be all about advocacy and very important information. So, um, so with National Caregivers Month, so who are the caregivers that this is designed to recognize and how many are there in Wisconsin and exactly what do they do? <laughs> okay, let's start with the basics. Um, there are close to 600,000 family caregivers here in Wisconsin. And by uh, saying family caregivers, we use a very broad definition of family. It can be people related to you, but it can be friends and neighbors, people from your church, people who help people who are in need of assistance um, because of their physical or mental uh, conditions uh, of old age. Um, caregivers uh, come in all sizes and shapes and all ages. And you know, it isn't just us elderly, although we do make up a good percentage of, the, of that. Um, and you know, most people don't realize they're caregivers or a lot of people don't realize they're caregivers, particularly in the beginning. They think they're just being a good wife or a good spouse or they're a good daughter or a good son or a good friend. And, you know, often caregiving starts out relatively simple, running to the store, driving people to church and stuff like that. But let me tell you, it escalates and it escalates pretty significantly. Over 50% of the caregivers in Wisconsin have medical duties. Mm -hmm. um, and they include things like wound care, uh, feeding tubes, medication management. There's some pretty significant level of um, medical knowledge that caregivers learn over time um, to take care of the particular needs of the person that they're taking care of. Mm -hmm. And Helen, when you were talking about caregiving, it's kind of interesting you say that because a lot of people don't even realize they are a caregiver because they're so accustomed to doing the task or the job every day. Does um, a family member or a loved one, do you need any special training to be a caregiver? Well, you know, we at this particular point don't train caregivers. You become a caregiver because somebody you know or love needs help and mm -hmm. you start helping. And, you know, we do not really have a good organized program for taking care of people with disabilities or people uh, with infirmities of aging. And so what you end up doing is the family creates the system. And so people step up and do what they can. Now, sometimes you're lucky in a family, you have somebody who's a healthcare professional and has a greater knowledge. Sometimes the decision of who the family caregiver is is based on geography. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you all live close enough together, you split it up. Somebody takes care of the money and somebody takes care of the shopping mm -hmm. and somebody takes care of the medical needs. There's no particular training program. Now we've really um, lobbied pretty strongly for something called the Wisconsin Care Act that would, when a person is discharged from the hospital, 
train the caregiver and the medical chores they're expected to do for follow-up. But boy, let me tell you, you don't fill out an application, you don't get a competency test, you don't get any educational programs. Um, you have to rely on uh, local resources, friends, and lots of stuff on the internet to help people too. And with caregiving, Helen, is this something you do alone? Do you notice that a lot of people are kind of doing it on their own? Well, I think you do it alone and you don't do it alone. Um, you know, you do it alone, particularly if the person is living with your family. If you're a small family and you're the only person available, sometimes you are the only person available. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, there are care teams. And, you know, it's, uh, as I said, family members who divvy up the chores. I find it very um, refreshing sometimes to realize that I'm speaking for millennials because mm -hmm. an incredible number of young people are part of the care teams in their family and after school and after work are taking care of um, people and working their shift as part of the team. There's also professional caregivers and many family caregivers supplement their service, at the, what they provide with some respite care or, or with somebody say you have a home health aide that can come in and help bathe or help do specific chores. Um, so there's help uh, that way. Um, later on, I'm going to give you some good websites to go in and look at for resources. But, you know, it is very isolating to be a caregiver because often you cannot leave your person, your mm -hmm. loved one alone. And so unless you get relief from a family member or a friend or a professional caregiver, you are, are become very limited in your activities outside of caregiving. Absolutely. And if you're just joining us today, I'm talking with Helen Mark Sticks with AARP Wisconsin, all about National Caregivers Month and the resources and information that's out there. This is a pre-recorded interview, but we would still love to have any questions or comments. Please post them down below on our Facebook.com page, or if you're watching us on YouTube, and we will make sure we get to them. So, you know, caregiving is, is such a strenuous task. So how has the pandemic affected caregiving? Caregiving. Well, I think the pandemic has been particularly hard on caregivers and for a series of reasons. One is that sometimes when you did have help that was coming into your house, those are professional caregivers who are um, moving from job to job and who are moving from caregiving situation to caregiving situation. And so you worry about um, them being spreaders of the disease. So a lot of people discontinued their outside support. Mm -hmm. Some of the young people I talked about and some of uh, the working caregivers, and there are a lot of 60% of the caregivers also work. So for those people, it became very difficult to, who could you let in the house? And so the amount of support you could get from your own family and from your friends and neighbors was diminished because of the pandemic. And so I think we um, are dealing, all of us, with um, isolation. And I think, you know, some of the support groups have managed to continue with Zoom and other ways, but it's not quite the same. Things like memory cafes have been suspended places you can go with the people you're caring for that provide more social interaction have slowed down. So the pandemic has presented a whole bunch of unique challenges. Also, sometimes towards the end of family caregiving, it gets to be too much. And so that you say, it's time for me to go back to being a spouse, or it's time for me to go back to being a daughter and to turn the care over to professional caregivers and put somebody in a facility like a nursing home or assisted living. Well, people are very reluctant because of the death rates right now mm -hmm. and the infection rates in nursing homes to put their loved ones in nursing homes. And so they continue to try to manage at home under circumstances that they might not have attempted in the past. So I think that the caregivers who I view as heroes to begin with have really been put in a, an incredible situation and are rising to the challenge. And unfortunately, it's because they really have no choice. Um, and um, it's something we need to look at when the smoke clears.
And I know I started off the show, Helen, by talking about National Caregivers Month and the proclamation from Tony Evers. Did you want to add anything more to that, just in case this is the first time that people are aware there's even a month to highlight our caregivers? <laughs> well, you know, I think people don't realize um, how much caregiving really goes on. Mm -hmm. And I think nationally, we do National Caregiver Month uh, through the um, federal agencies and the federal proclamation. And I'm very happy to say that Governor Evers did the proclamation for specific for Wisconsin. I have to say that this administration has stepped up for family caregivers in a couple of ways. Number one is the proclamation, but you know, words are words. And although it's nice to be recognized, caregivers need a lot more help than that. They need money, they need programs, they need other things. And so there has been a governor's task force on caregiving to look at on what a practical can be done for caregivers to help them. And that included not only family caregivers, but it included paid caregivers because, you know, we're having a crisis on both sides. We're overwhelming families and we're underpaying and understaffing mm -hmm. facilities so that we are in a position where both the whole care force needs a strong boost. So it's good to be doing this care um, giving month. I have to say that I want to talk about a few resources for caregivers. Yeah. You, you know, we, um, um, we're pretty good in Wisconsin and, um, you know, when it, it was time to do the task force, an amazing number of people went ahead and applied for that. But there are existing organizations and just the basic thing about where do you get information? Mm -hmm. And there is something called, um, there's three places to go. One is with the Department of Health and, and Human Services. And I think you're going to be flashing mm -hmm. the... Um, <laughs> yeah, this mm -hmm. caregiver website um, talks about federal programs and state programs that provide funding to help caregivers. They help pay for respite care. They pay for a bunch of other things. They support various support groups and in any way try to help caregivers. And so this website will give you an idea of some of the programs and what the qualifications are. The second thing that Wisconsin has, we have a website that's called wisconsincaregiver.org. And that is just kind of a reference site. But on that site, you can go to your county and find out who your support groups are, who your help is, um, who, what uh, agencies are available close to home. And so that's very helpful. And then the third website I'm going to give you has to do with the ADRCs. ADRCs are Aging and Disability Resource Centers, and we have um, that service is available in every county in Wisconsin. Mm. And the ADRCs are really the front door, the opening door to everything you need to know <laughs> about mm. aging and caregiving. And they, they, um, can refer you to all the programs. If you don't know what services you, the person you're caring for might be eligible for, they can help you. They can explain all the funding of various government programs. They usually know who will help on a pro bono basis and what resources are good in your community. They are a wonderful place. And they often are the place that um, organizes and supports caregiver support groups. So, you know, it's a place where you can go when you are overwhelmed and you say, mm -hmm. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to apply for social security. I don't know whether Medicare will cover this. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I have months and months of bills here. What do I do? Mm -hmm. The first place you go is you call the ADRC. And then, Helen, I know AARP has, now it's virtual because of the epidemic, we have Carevasations as another um, resource for um, the audience. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, Carevasations is an attempt to talk to caregivers and to connect them and make sure um, that they realize the value of what they're doing and to help reinforce them. It's kind of scary to start to do this. I mean, you mm. You decided when you were young not to be a nurse and all of a sudden you had nursing duties. <laughs> Correct. All of a sudden you're handling someone else's money. 
I mean, it's, it's really, really very difficult sometimes. We're doing, besides the conversations, we're doing a whole bunch of things to help at AARP. Mm-hmm. Um, we are um, doing the conversations. Um, I served on the governor's task force. We have a series of bills that we're supporting at the legislation, at the legislature, including the CARE Act, which would give better medical training for those people caring for loved ones. We're looking, at, we're supporting again the Wisconsin Credit for Caring Act, which is a tax credit for caregivers. Not only do you give all this emotion and this skill and time, but the average family, the average individual spends $7,000 wow. annually caring for a loved one. Mm-hmm. And when you think of how much money that is, think again, if you're caregiving over greater distances than 100 miles, it's more likely to be around $14,000. And so we're looking for legislation so that people, you know, caregivers are kind of caught between saving for their own retirement, sending their kids to college, mm-hmm. taking care of mom. So we're trying to get tax credit for certain types of medical expenses um, that people spend keeping their loved ones out of facilities. Because boy, once you get into a facility, chances are you're going to end up on Medicaid and mm-hmm. chances are that the state is going to pay for it. So let's give them a little tax credit up front to keep them at home. We're looking at changing the Family Medical Leave Act so that we can have people take time off to go to um, meetings about people's discharges or go to meetings about their care planning Mm -hmm. or take time off to take their person to um, doctor's appointments and things like that. And we're finally... I keep going on these shows with you and I keep throwing out all kinds of websites. So AARP, it's time to get organized. We had put out a caregiver's guide about 10 years ago and it was very, very good. And um, 10 years has passed. So we are putting together, and I just finished doing it, um, we are putting together a list of the resources and how to reach them in Wisconsin. The new guide will be published in January. So I really urge people to keep an eye on our website when we announce it, because Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be helpful. We divided it up into different where you go if you have legal issues, where you go if you have medical issues, where you go if you need help with public benefits. Um, so that I think it's going to be a really useful guide. We are we speak for family caregivers because okay. they're too overwhelmed to speak to for themselves. Absolutely. And that's why this month is so important to highlight all the hard work that they're doing. And to say thank you to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, people don't realize what a huge societal contribution this is because we don't have the infrastructure or the facilities to take care of everybody that needs help. We don't have the government funds to take care of everybody that needs help. We rely on these unpaid, and my friend Jim always calls them the unsung heroes of Wisconsin. And I I agree with them because they really are going well above and beyond, and they may think of themselves as the good daughter or the good spouse. Mm -hmm. But I think of them as real heroes, and I think we take this month to celebrate them and say thank you and to get our advocacy ducks in a row so next session we can make sure (laughs) that they get the support they need. And as I say, keep an eye on our website because I think that Caregiver Guide is going to be quite useful, and the more people that know where to go for help, the less stressful caregiving will be. And I have to say... You know, I made a mistake very young. I do not have children. Mm -hmm. The people doing the caregiving are the daughters, Mm -hmm. the daughters-in-law, and -hmm. the wives. Mm -hmm. And yes, the men do step up when they are the last resort. But this is a huge burden on the women who are already raising children. And I think particularly during the pandemic, people are realizing how much stress there is on having extra people in a household of having to split your duties between your job and your caregiving. And so I really, I urge everyone who knows a caregiver 
Send them a bouquet of flowers. Send them uh -huh. a thank you note. Just give them the acknowledgement that it is really hard to do this work. And there are a lot of people like me who don't have family. So for all of you people who have stepped out to take care of friends or members of your church group or have, have become parts of care teams, okay. my hat's off to you because I, like many people, will end up relying on the kindness of strangers. And if you have to do that, Wisconsin's a good place to be because we do recognize the okay. value of caregiving and how important it is. Yeah, and I um, get off if, my high horse. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, you're good, Helen. And if you are viewing this right now and you are looking into possibly taking a Carevisation virtual workshop, you can go on the AARP Wisconsin website. If you scroll to maybe the middle of the page, it says events. If you click on there, that has all the upcoming events, especially when it comes to Carevisations. So, Helen, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and talking about how important this month is and um, the resources which i always find so valuable for our viewers and thank you and thank you to all the caregivers up there Absolutely. you know you really make a difference not only in the life of your your loved one but in the other family members and in the, in the society as a whole so thank Absolutely. you for doing this work Absolutely. And thank you, Helen. And I also want to point out just a couple upcoming events um, that are coming up that you can register at the AARP website. So um, next week, or I'm sorry, this week, we have the Home Fit Workshop at 6.30 p.m. And this is all about how some low cost and free ways that you can update your home. Um, to ensure that you are being safe and that you can stay at home longer. November 17th is Bill Miller, who is a renowned musician, and he will actually be doing um, a Q&A with us and then also live music later on in the evening. So, um, and this is free. Once again, you do not need to be an AARP member. And then um, once again, yeah, the concert in the evening, you can find all the information on our website or you can call the one eight seven seven number below and you can actually register over the phone. And then join us uh, next week for Thursdays with AARP when we will be talking with Steve Carter with AARP. He's going to be talking about National Veterans and Militaries Family Month. So it's Caregivers Month, but it's also um, this month. And he will be bringing a guest along with us. So please make sure that you um, come back here next Thursday at noon on our Facebook.com page or our YouTube page. And I want to thank everybody so much for joining us today. Um, feel free to share this video on your Facebook.com page or share the link on YouTube. And once again, I just want to echo what Helen said. We want to thank all the caregivers for all their hard work and dedication. And even though there's only one month for you, we do thank you every day of the year. So thank you so much for joining us today and stay safe.